So what about radiation-based procedures? You've got a pregnant patient. She needs a cath. She needs a CTA. She needs a mechanical thromboembolectomy. What do you do? First, you want to get in a good informed consent. And I always give moms those numbers because moms are terrified of radiation. And I've had to sort of prod them along to get them to consent to some of these procedures because they say, oh no, my baby, the radiation exposure, et cetera. And so I give them those hard numbers. I say, listen, this is the exposure that you expect. This is generally within the safely considered limit. We will be okay. Um, because as all of us in cardio obstetrics, have come to learn um, mom will put her baby before herself every single time. Remember to focus on mom. You've got to have a living vessel to have a living baby. Um, if the patient is viable, keep a C-section tray and a baby warmer close at hand. If the patient is between 20 weeks and whatever your institution considers viable, keep a C-section tray at hand. Because if that patient codes, Resuscitative hysterotomy has got to be on your list of things to do to make things better. External shielding. We are wrapping these poor moms up in heavy shielding. It is of limited value. It probably reduces the fetal radiation dose by about 3%, um, although it has psychological advantages both to the mom and to the providers. And so we continue to do it, but it really probably doesn't help very much. Um, it may increase maternal discomfort, or on the flip side, it may decrease maternal discomfort if she feels better about being shielded. Internal shielding, however, is very beneficial. So tight collimations, using low-dose fluoro, using fluoro say rather than sine, although if you look at interventional procedures, about 70% of the radiation for most interventional procedures does not come from synangiography, it comes from fluoro. You want to avoid high magnification and you want to avoid steep angles. So we favor AP projections if possible. Avoid direct radiation to the abdomen and position the patient just slightly on the left side, as Dr. Bortnick said, to minimize IVC compression. So I usually put a small wedge or a rolled blanket under the right side of the patient to tilt them very gently to the left. With regard to PCI, Depending on the skill set, consider femoral versus radial access. So if you've got a good radial operator, the radiation is going to be less because you are not traversing the abdomen and going past the fetus. However, if you have somebody who's not a great radial operator and it's going to take them 10 minutes of catheter flipping to stumble upon a coronary, then they may be better off with a femoral procedure or not working on your pregnant patient at all. Um, also, you want to rely on IVIS to reduce radiation. If you're going to use OCT, you can combine OCT with your preliminary pictures and your final pictures and try to avoid using radiation throughout the procedure. Per the American College of OBGYN, pregnant women should never be denied an indicated procedure because of pregnancy. Pregnancy alone is not a contraindication to radiation-based procedures. And I, I wish that I could make a sign that says that and, and hang it up in the emergency room and in every cardiology clinic across America. So what if the doctor's the pregnant one? Then what do we do? So a sky survey in 2011 was completed. It had 380 respondents. And they found that 65% of respondents were allowed to work in the cath lab during their pregnancies, while 35% were prohibited from working in the cath lab while pregnant. Um, aside from the obviously paternalistic viewpoint that you see here um, of telling a grown woman with her own fetus what she can and can't do, the current data do not suggest a significantly increased risk to the fetus. When pregnant, women, when pregnant women work in the cardiac catheterization laboratory with appropriate shielding, and thus there is no justification for preventing pregnant women from performing procedures in the cath lab. And so um, when the doctor is the pregnant one, if she would like to, she is more than welcome to continue working in the cath lab with minimal risk to her fetus.